Stop spacing is an issue for transit systems around the world, be it on buses and trams, or even on subways and regional trains. I talked about stop spacing in a video earlier this year, and how optimizing stop spacing maximizes the number of people who are on transit. By balancing both the number of people with an easy walking distance to stops and the speed of vehicles so that transit is an attractive option. But there's something that can throw a wrench into everything. Density. Let's talk about why. Welcome to RM Transit, a channel about public transport systems around the world. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon so I can bring you more videos. So you're probably wondering how density works with stop spacing. In my last video about the topic, I talked about how stop spacing is generally best optimized for speed and people's ability to walk to stops. But I was largely talking about that in the context of local transit, which can be everything from a suburban bus to the urban subways you see in a city like Paris, that both generally serve fairly uniform environments, whether that be typical suburbia or Paris urbia. But high and inconsistent density can throw a wrench in this. People can walk to local destinations, density spikes in some areas, and things can start to feel very congested. To see this, we need only look at the RER in Paris, which is an express subway in the core and a suburban train system across the Ile de France region. In the center, RER stops tend to be about two kilometers apart, and that's a substantial distance. And what's interesting is that while many people talk about stop spacing, including myself, in terms of how many people can easily walk to a stop, with two kilometer spacings on the RER, it's implicit that a lot of people aren't walking up. In the suburbs, RER stop spacing is substantially different which isn't really like an urban service, where your stops tend to have more or less the same spacing, unless you're in a weird condition like on a bridge or something. In suburban Paris, RER stops are often three, four, or sometimes even five kilometers apart. And this isn't just in Paris. For example, take a look at Taipei's red line. In central areas, the stations are 700 meters apart with serious regularity. But as we drift to the city's outskirts to the north, stops start to be spaced out one and a half or even two kilometers apart. Why is it like this? I like to think of stop spacing as distorted by density. If you are into physics, it's sort of like how gravity distorts time. Imagine that stop spacing is ideally consistent with regard to how many people each stop serves. That means that stops need to be closer together in more densely populated areas so that stops can serve the same number of people. In commercial business districts, which are often, but not always, in city centers, densities are even higher, and so stop spacings can be even closer together. But is there really this convoluted law that connects stop spacings and densities by some general measure? Well, another way of looking at it is on a station-by-station -station basis. Whether or not you put a station at a given point, costs aside, is usually about whether that stop will generate positive ridership. In a low-density area, a new stop might add a few trips, but it's going to slow trips down for so many people up and down the line, and that means that such a stop is often not justified. But the equation is flipped in higher density areas, allowing for more stops that are well used. Now some people have a weird perspective on surface, where since the RER has two kilometer city center stop spacings, all of those people outside of walking radius are just not being served by the RER. But that's clearly not the case, and it's always a balance. Local services like buses prioritize people along a street corridor at the expense of longer distance riders, while the RER operates as the reverse. A two kilometer stop spacing centers the people already on the train and those traveling to destinations near the stops or even connecting to other lines. It's transit that's not necessarily for any given neighborhood, but an interstitial fabric that connects up the whole region. And of course, just because you're outside of walking distance of a stop or station doesn't mean that transit isn't serving you. Transit reduces air pollution and congestion, which both have an impact even if you're not living close to the transit. Complaining that transit doesn't stop outside your home is not really that different from a driver complaining that trains are a waste of money because they don't use them. And the reality with express transit is that you can still get on board even if you're not close to a stop. You just need to use a connecting service to go to a denser neighborhood that justified the express stop. And to be clear, this differential isn't just in the city center. As I said, stop spacing should be downstream of density, not proximity to some certain geographic point. On the Disneyland branch of the RERA, my name, not the RATPs, the last two stops are just two kilometers apart, similar to in the city center, and that's because this is an area with a lot of development and a number of different attractions that draw passengers. Of course, the differential in stop spacing does still impact speed, but fortunately, slower speeds are typically okay in dense areas where congestion tends to be the worst. You're not gonna be driving across central Paris at a very high speed. 
Of course, at the end of the day, stop spacing and its variability also depends on mode. With lighter modes like buses, trams, and even subway trains, acceleration tends to be high, but top speeds tend to be lower. That means that the cost-benefit equation in terms of adding more stops tends to lean in the more stops direction. While you might not be able to control the top speed of buses and trams, the reality with trains is that you have a lot of influence as a planner on your route's top speed by specking higher performance trains and spacing stops further apart. So then is there a holistic way we can look at planning stop spacing? I'd suggest you start by looking at density and putting more stops in denser areas. You should then create different service types which serve different journeys from short urban jaunts to longer cross-regional marathons with wider stop spacings. These different services can be implemented with transit modes that best match the operational conditions. So for a short urban route with lots of stops, you choose a tram or a bus, while a longer cross-regional route uses regional trains or high-speed subway. And then you finally make some bespoke, not algorithmic adjustments. For example, adding a stop near a major university that might not cause density to tick up. At the same time, you can potentially remove spots in a certain location where you know a lot of riders on a local route are in it for the long haul. Do this and you create a transit system that works with your city, not against it. Thanks.